Can I do a duck, rabbit, finger, eye? So today I thought I would try to explain something that I thought would be fun for urban sketcher or groups, which would be after the group draws for two hours or three hours or whatever, and you look at everyone's work, it might be fun if you take two or three people who draw relatively fast and draw very differently, you think they draw differently. You can see that they draw differently and aim them, have them sit side by side and have them look at the same thing and see over their shoulders how they approach the drawing to begin with. Sometimes that's a stumbling block for people. And so I thought I would play three different people this morning on my way to the dentist. And how do I make this go? So what I did was I drew the Paris Opera House facade, which is this tall, narrow building with sort of boring buildings on either side of it. And as you saw, I began with sort of the drawing, mapping out the perspective lines. And uh, the, the horizon line is below the canvas, about it where my, my gut should be. My gut is that way more than more than it should be but anyway and then the second time I drew it I drew by sort of just mapping up big areas of color ignoring perspective uh, I just saw that it was a sort of a trapezoid I was dealing with and to hell with it I wasn't gonna fuss with anything else so there are two different ways of going about attacking a building or anything really you could draw the perspective lines to begin with or you can attack it by the by the um, by shapes another way that I've seen people draw is I like to refer to it as the bacteria in a petri dish method where you essentially start in the middle or somewhere and then you just sort of build you look at the object and you just draw around it like a petri dish might grow um, bacteria. And if you, if these three people that I just showed had been drawing side by side, I think it would be sort of interesting to see at what points they sort of do the same thing or what things they do that are completely different and see where that takes you. Okay, I then, with this opera house, I zoomed in to one little decorative area. And so you see me drawing that here using the sort of shape method. It's a little bit of the shape method and the Petri dish method. Um, I'm filling up areas with value um, on my iPad. I could be using a a, uh, okay, what's wrong here? I could be using, okay, I want it black. Okay, now we're starting over again. How difficult is this iPad? I could be using uh, a big uh, piece of charcoal to do this. I could be perhaps doing it in watercolor. Um, I don't know. I'm not a watercolorist. But, so there's you know, there were three different ways that I showed. Then I moved inside, and I'll just show you what the inside of the opera house is just this opulent uh, gilt and marble and um, filigree la di da ness everywhere. And what I do is often I'll just find a corner. Rather than drawing the whole la di da, I just draw the la part, or sometimes the d part. The d part is here. I zoom in, I crop, I make an interesting shape, zigzaggy or whatever it is that I'm thinking about, and I'll go to town at it. And um, here, there, when you look up, you see these 
chandeliers, when you look to the side, you see the same chandelier, but now it's reflected. And it's just, it's just a lot of fun to, to uh, just get lost in a building or a forest or a garden. And you don't, you don't have to draw, I find, you don't have to draw the entire thing. Um, you're not an architect, really. Um, you're... What are we? We're urban sketchers. We're supposed to show what we see. Well, I sometimes see a detail. I don't see the whole thing. I mean, none of us see the whole thing. Otherwise, we'd never finish a drawing because <laughs> it keeps changing. Um, you have to edit. And by, I edit a lot by zooming in on something. Another way to edit is to make it simple. Uh, you look at a complicated scene and you say, I'm going to draw the whole thing, but I'm going to make it simple. I'll make it black and white rather than color. Or I'll make it in line rather than value. Or I'll make it in value rather than line. Um, the hardest drawing for me to do was the one that was the contour line. Because it just it gets I get lost with that. Um, so here's the outside of the opera house. Again, zooming in... The, the the one of the drawings I did was just that much right there, or not even. You know, just this much is an interesting composition to me. It's you get lost in the acanthus leaves and the la di da, or the la di. Here you have to get the da in there too. The la di da. You've got the cherubs and you've got the face and you've got the urn and another face and another face. How many faces does this thing need to have? Three more up there. But just this right here, this whatever this part is, is, is really cool, I think. So I, I simplify by zooming, in, by zooming in and cropping. Um, but uh, again, back to the original thing here. Again, if you were to see three people who draw differently all at the same time drawing this or drawing the tree or drawing the bridge or where, whatever it is you're drawing, the figure, if it was a figure drawing experience. But with urban sketching, you know, you go to a location like the opera house or the library or the museum or the park, and we all see the same thing around us um and then we each go in our little directions and we aim our eyeballs in, in a different direction and then we take out our tool which is they're very different as well but once we start putting something on a piece of paper that's when we all are sort of on the same page again pun intended. Different pages. Well, you know what I mean. We're in the same, we're all in the same boat. We have a blank page in front of us. How do we start the process of turning what we see into a drawing? And I often will, um, will, for example, I'll just stop this nonsense and show you. I'll show you what I do. Let's say here's here's what I'm gonna draw on. Often what I do, sometimes actually on the piece of paper, sometimes in my head, I might um, say, let's say I'm looking across the Esplanade to Cambridge, and I've got the Longfellow Bridge. I'll just kind of show you what that I'm drawing from memory. I know I'm cheating. Here's the Longfellow Bridge. It's also called the Salt and Pepper Bridge because it has these salt and pepper things on it. The river, the park, things in the distance, some cranes, some clouds, whatever it is. The river. So I was showing people that 
what I could do, let's say I'm using a big, broad pencil or watercolor brush or something, what I could do is say, all of this right here, this is all grass. I'm done. Okay, that's about a quarter of the entire page. <laughs> but there's something there. And then I could do this. Now the sky's done. But what's nice about getting these things done is suddenly the paper is full or being filled. It isn't as frightening as a big white blank. And then you can start with the details. You can add the arches and add the shadows and add the boats and add the trees. And then, you know, you work on the details but just drawing a pencil line where the cloud is, that isn't quite as satisfying, I think. What's, what's sometimes nice is, especially when you're outside and you're, you have a limited time frame, sometimes it's interest. you know, you can, just as you're getting your muscles and brain going, you know, pick a whole chunk of the thing and just start it, you know. And this is the part that you don't really care about. You know, there's a tree, there's a tree. The the part that you're really interested in is right here. That's That's your focus, let's say. But if you just start there, you might look at all of the blank part of the picture and you might say something like, you know, I'm never, ever, ever going to finish. How can I possibly finish this entire thing? Well, do what I did. Just do it fast. You can go back if you want to add some leaves or whatever you want to add. But I think um, I think there's, there's so many different ways, again, of drawing, which we all know. There's so many different ways of seeing and de deciding what you want to depict. But uh, watching how an artist uh, starts is really, I think, an important way where you might, be, might want to try that method. You don't have to draw like that person. That's not the point. It's just see how they start a drawing and maybe that'll make you um, not be as intimidated by the big white blank page by, you know, filling it up, whether it be with perspective lines or whether it be with areas of light and dark or some other method. So anyway, that's all I have to tell you. I'm sure I could tell you more. Buy low, sell high. Go west, young man. Bye.